Welcome to another episode of The Wave. My name is Adam. My name is Nick. It's the weekly news and chat show from the world famous bottom of the stream podcast. And guess what? What? We're here recording on a Friday night. Again. Not watching Stranger Things. No. <laughs> which has just re re-debuted? Part yeah, two? Yeah. Volume two? De- yeah. These last two episodes have dropped. debuted. Dropped is a good word. That's more modern. Today. Makes you sound more cool. Yeah, they have. So the last two of season four. I'm hoping I can go and watch one. Yeah, I might try and get one in after you've it. gone tonight. That'd be cool. But we'll see. There's there's spoilers everywhere, so I know that's why I'm I'm doing. keen to get them watched this weekend. Yeah, same. You've got to do it quick, I think, <laughs> because I don't want to know anything. No, before I've seen it. I'm hoping to do one tonight, one tomorrow. Yeah, well, the one's two hours and forty minutes I tomorrow. Know. That's a long time. It's more than longer than the Irishman. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it is. <laughs> Put them together, they might be. Yeah, they definitely are. I um, can't even remember. But <laughs> well, it, uh, look, I, uh, we mentioned this a few weeks ago a bit. I mean, I just, I didn't, I was surprised because I, I didn't find any of the volume one ones dragged. No, I didn't either. I thought they were great, all of them. I, and I think there was, was the one episode that was just an hour. Yeah. And everything else was like an hour and 20, 15, 20. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like there's a lot to tie up, but there is still a lot of me saying there's only two episodes. Yeah, there's still four <laughs> hours of TV. It's technically four episodes. Yeah, exactly. In old and money. then we've got a whole ep- season five to come. Which, which is, is, which is pretend, which we think is going to be the final one, don't we? Yes, I think, I think that was the Duffer confirmed. Brothers yeah. plan. Which, so they'll all be four hours long. Yeah. And then <laughs> per episode. Yeah. Anyway, how are you? What have you been up to? Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, have I got any gossip? I don't think I've got any gossip. I'm, I'm a bit sore. Why? I've been playing tennis this this evening. Nice. And I'm, I'm getting old now, so... You are. That's true. I need to go and have a... Look very sporty. A bit of a soak. You've got a nice new hat. That's because I've just got out of the shower and I didn't want to do my hair properly. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I like it. It's very green. Thanks. I like it. I don't, people are going to imagine me like sitting there with a leprechaun's hat on. That's what he's doing. Yeah. So that's what you're imagining. That's what it is. It's even got a bird on the front. <laughs> okay. Do leprechauns <laughs> like birds? Yep. Okay, good. I'm fine <laughs> with that. Uh, yeah, yeah. How about you? Yeah, I'm fine. Good. Not not really been up to much. Yeah? Any, done anything sexy? Nothing sexy. I've done, I've done some adulting. I've had some work done on the house. Oh, so lovely. It's been quite good. So you've got a, your house is looking sexy. That's it's good. Getting, getting there. Yeah. Hopefully by the end of next month, it will look really sexy. I uh, went for a curry on Wednesday. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Uh, it was all right. Okay. <laughs> Very all right? Nah, it was all right. Um, but I'm sure the company was excellent. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Not the food. It was indeed. Although there was one noticeable exception because our good friend, friend of the podcast, Wayne, right. got COVID. Yeah. Not good. Don't know if I'm going to say that on the podcast, but I've done it now. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, when he told me, I thought, that feels really old school. Don't you think? I had a bit of a nostalgia twinge. That's a bit retro, but it's back in the news. <laughs> back in fashion. Not that it ever went away, but you know. <laughs> Back in the news again. It was actually on the news today. So hopefully him and his missus get Don't well get soon. Don't get started on that. <laughs> um, other than that, that's about all I've been doing. Yeah. This weather's been all right. Got some tomatoes on my t- tomato plant. Happy with that. Absolute green fingers. <laughs> I'm green hatted, you're green fingered. Absolutely. Uh, go environment. <laughs> oh. oh, don't hit the mic stands. <laughs> I have to edit all that out. <laughs> Uh, last week's film. Should we do a little bit on last week's film? Yeah. What an interesting movie. Yes, it really was. I, I had a great time doing that episode. Yeah, it was much better time than I had better. watching the movie. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Set up, set up. I still can't get over the story behind that movie. No, as yeah. in how it came to be in yeah, real life. It's a crazy story. I'm not going to tell it here because I'm. It's just if you're not listening to it, our episode on set up. Go back and listen. Go and find it because it is a. It's a terrible film with a really interesting life story. Yeah. You want to know how Bruce Willis and Ryan Felipe got, got involved in this dreadful movie. Dreadful movie. Go and listen to the episode. Yeah, absolutely. Because, uh, fuck me, that movie was all over the place. Yeah, it was a mess. <laughs> it was a right royal mess. It was like, it was something, and then for 10 minutes, it was a completely different movie, and then it kind of went back to what it started. Yeah, it was then something else. I, I love it when we get that sort of thing, though, where it's that combination of how the hell did this get made? And mm. also, I love that this got made yeah. in this state. And how does it end up on Netflix? 
Well, there seems to be an influx of Bruce Willis films coming to Netflix. The, um, Midnight in the Switchgrass has appeared. Yes. There's another one that turned up today or I, yesterday. I don't know if we can count the uh, setup as an influx. Uh, no, know, it's not a recent one. No, it's not. But there just seems to, he seems to be hitting Netflix quite a lot yeah. just lately. Or he seems to be in my peripheral vision a lot just lately for some reason. It's um, the one that's, that has, I think, has arrived today. today. Or yesterday? A, Recently. What? A good no, a day to die. A day to die. And he's already done a movie a called A Good Day to Die Hard. <laughs> That's just two extra words. Yeah, well, this isn't a good day, and he's not going to die hard, is it? Apparently, he's only in it for like four minutes. Sure. So, it's, a, it's brand new as well. It's like yeah. a 2022 film. Yeah. Might be his last film, maybe. 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 Check it out. A Day to Die, as opposed <laughs> to A Day Tomorrow. <laughs> right, should we do some Netflix news? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Let's hit the ground running. Mm-hmm. This is quite an interesting one to start with. Apologies, you have to uh, click on the Daily Mail. Ugh. Uh, absolute vile. Heat rag. Right. Uh, but quite an interesting story, nonetheless. Okay. Uh, the BBC are considering, this article claims, putting a block on uh, streaming services such as Netflix, Amazon, and uh, others from buying their shows for five years. So you can have it. We'll still sell it to you, but not until it's five years old. Okay. Because they've got their own streaming service. Yeah. They've got, they're in, involved in BritBox. Yeah. Kind of makes sense, but those things haven't taken off. No. And I don't know that, I don't know, pick any big BBC show. Keeping, I can't even think of one. Keeping that back from Netflix for five years. It's not going to benefit them, surely, because no. it's not going to drive people. The new series of anything is not going to drive people to BritBox. No, it's not. Uh, so I, I think it feels a bit like cutting your nose off to spite your face. I agree. And after five years, Netflix is just going to go, well, we won't give you as much money for Line of Duty. It's five years old. Yeah, of course they are. Why would they even want it? <laughs> Everybody's already seen it by that point. The BBC are terrible at advertising stuff. Sure. So like the second season of Outlaws is out. The, the is it? Chris, yeah. I had no idea. It's like four weeks old. I had no idea. Nor did I. I've seen it on the iPod. I was flicking through the iPlayer for something else yesterday and noticed it was on there. Do you think that's because I don't know if... Well, I know you are you are a bit like me. I I have no interaction with live TV. Yeah, nor do I. So I, I would only probably know from either the socials or from... Word of like, mouth. L- like Stephen Merchant, yeah. if I caught one of his tweets. Or if I went on the iPlayer to watch something else and yeah. I saw the picture. But is that not the BBC just not being in the general public eye, though? Well, I think our so. fault. We yeah. should be being advertised at because we're the ones that they're trying to get. Sure. Yeah. We're not watching them. Yeah. So they should be trying to get to us. So I'd have found it eventually. Yeah. Because I really, I I found I really it enjoyed the first I did as well. series. But, yeah. That's, yeah. Well, that's an in- yeah, that's interesting. That is. It is. I just, I just don't think the BBC are very good at targeting markets that they're not yeah got already hmm. yeah that is interesting uh yeah and apparently i don't know if that's the right way to do it they're looking at increasing the they what they are calling their exclusivity period from currently apparently it's 18 months and it will be they're looking at five years okay uh, peaky so, blinders there you go that's a big yeah. one that they sell i've never watched that i haven't either but yeah Got new, ah. got, we're on the Daily Mail's website and I very nearly saw a Stranger Things spoiler then. Did you? Yep, so I've scrolled back up the page. <laughs> we're, we're playing with fire tonight, <laughs> we are, I tell you. We are, really are. Uh. We're going to go on all these websites that are Netflix-based <laughs> and entertainment-based. And that's really harsh. Going adverts. back to the Stranger Things thing, it is now... Less than 12 qu- hours It's old. quarter to eight at night. Yeah. And wh- is, was it 8 a.m. Yeah, over here? Yeah. So it's less than 12 hours the thing's been out. Yeah. Normal people with jobs and lives won't have seen it. Are probably just about settling down now if that's your thing on the first night. People who watched it th- at 8 a.m. have only finished it six hours ago. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, absolute madness. Madness. <laughs> Well, I'm assuming it was, it was a picture of Noah Schnapp, so I'm assuming it was a spoiler. Okay, we talked a few weeks ago. Let's move on about yep. uh, a. A series coming to Netflix that where they were going to reimagine uh, a Greek mythology strand of stories. Uh, a, a series called Chaos. Yes. Uh, well, Hugh Grant's been cast as Zeus. Wow. Okay. That's pretty cool. 
I mean, is you can have a couple of Zeus's. Isn't Russell Crowe Zeus in yeah, the new Thor? Yeah. Who would you rather, who's a better Zeus, do you think? I think Hugh Grant has had a a rejuvenation of his career in the last few years. And he's take, he seems to be taking on meteor roles. Paddington too. He yeah. showed what he could do in is. Paddington too, and it's just opened all those doors for him. Because he was really good. What was that film he did with um, the guy from Sons of Anarchy? The Gentleman. Oh, yes. He was really, he was the best yeah. thing about that. Yeah. Because he's played something a little bit different. So I'm going with Hugh Grant. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, well, he's he's going to be your Zeus. Uh, the cast uh, has, he's not the only person who's been announced this week to start in chaos. David Thewlis. I always, every time I see a picture of David Fulis, he isn't who I think he is. Right. I, who was the guy who played Frank Gallagher in Shameless? That was someone else. David yeah. David Thewlis was in, oh, well, he's been loads. So he was in like Harry Potter and uh, The Island of yeah. Dr. Moreau, Fargo. He's he's d- around I just, when I hear the name David Fulis, I always think of the guy who played Frank Gallagher. <laughs> and I don't know why. I'm going to find out what his name was now. I, who, who I only know as Frank Gallagher yeah, and not from anything else. David Frelfel. Is oh, okay. Called. So it's fine. close. Yeah, it's I can close. I can see why. He did that thing with Victoria Wood that was really good just before she died. Uh, who else? Oh, Janet McTeer has been cast in this. Uh, she was in Ozark. Yep. Uh, Naban Rizwan. Um, and quite a few people I've never heard of. And it's a really long <laughs> list. And I can't that is a really long list. Be bothered to read them out. Uh, the series is billed as a bold, darkly comic, contemporary take on Greek mythology, exploring love, power, and life in the underworld. Hmm. There you go. Um, look out for chaos at some point, maybe next year. Okay, I'm interested in that. Sounds fun. Yeah, uh, I th- I think uh, basically it's sort of uh, normos mortals yeah realizing that these some of these gods exist so um yeah that's your bag sounds keep like your it eyes, might be my bag keep your eyes peeled to netflix I'm up for it. next do you remember cameron diaz i do remember did you cameron know she diaz? was retired no me neither <laughs> i had this new story <laughs> earlier in the week we had this discussion at work do you know <laughs> she uh she stepped away from acting eight years ago I did. I had. <laughs> I had no idea that she had retired. That's Me neither. Bad, I suppose. And and formally retired in 2018. So that, even that's four years. Yeah, ago. I had. I had no idea. It, that until I, I hadn't read it seen her for earlier a while. this week, it occurred to me that I hadn't seen her for a while. But that is the first time I've really even thought about it. Well, as much as a uh, <laughs> piece of news that might have been, that isn't the news. The actual news is she is coming out of retirement. Yeah. Uh, to. Starring a Netflix movie, yeah, with Jamie Fox. Uh, it's called Back in Action. Jamie Fox has have come up twice on this show in the last two weeks. I now. know, yeah. Um, back in action, like is she's back in action. Exactly. Back in okay. Uh, it's the plot is still under wraps, but is directed by Seth Gordon, who uh, directed Horrible Bosses. Uh, okay. From a script he wrote with Brendan O'Brien, who wrote uh, Bad Neighbours, which was Zac Efron yep. and Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. Yeah, uh, that uh, is going to hit Netflix again, probably next year. Uh, Jamie Foxx released a audio conversation that he had with her. Bit okay. weird, I think. That is a bit weird. I presume she knew about it. She's recording uh, her phone call. <laughs> she, uh, Cameron Diaz in the clip says she's excited but anxious to return. Uh, and then Tom Brady turned up on the video call. Of course. Because, like, he? he's retired a few times and come back, hasn't he? Yeah, but he only retires for, like, a week. <laughs> it's not the same. Not eight years. Yeah, yeah. Cameron Diaz is the expert in this. Although, in this which game. one did I know had retired? True. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> um, yeah, so he was sort of in the gimmicky uh, Twitter announcement between between these three. Uh, I, I presume Tom Brady isn't going to be in the movie, but you, look, you, you never, never know. know. So... Yeah, welcome back. Uh, and also, congratulations on your retirement, <laughs> Cameron Diaz. Why did she why, why retire? Why not? If you know. can, when you're... Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> if, if you have the, uh, the means and the ability, fair play. Uh, a cancellation. Yes, I've seen this. A Netflix cancellation. I wanted to ask you about this show because this has been on my list and I've not got to it. I haven't either. A animated show called Q Force, which I know we have mentioned on this show before. We have, yeah. And I don't think we quite well, I definitely didn't get to it. No, I didn't. It isn't I, 
I'm still probably going to watch it at some point, even yeah. if it's been cancelled. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Q-Force, which stands for Queer, is Queer Force, which follows a group of LGBTQ super spies led by, by Steve Merriweather. Um, yeah, I seen. I remember seeing the trailer. And yeah, thinking, I've seen it. Pops, up on, my, go. pops well, up on my algorithm every so often. All you're going to have is that one season because it has been cancelled by Netflix. Netflix seems to be stepping away from animation a little bit. The, there's a lot of their animated stuff that's getting cancelled at the minute. Yes, but there is also a hell of a lot of stuff coming through. So, <laughs> yeah, which we, again we covered a few weeks ago. Uh, look, everything can't go on forever, can it? But, <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, I I can't comment on if it's good or not. That's I so I, I that's why I wondered if you'd got to it because I know we'd mentioned it before. No, uh, that's fine. No more Q force. No sorry, more Q force. Sorry. Next confirmation of something we had suspected was coming our way. And we know that Disney plus announced months ago that they will be bringing in a cheaper subscription tier in which they will play adverts. Yes. Uh, Netflix have confirmed they are going to do the same thing. And we suspected they wouldn't be. Yeah. We, we knew it was coming. Everybody knew it was coming. Uh, Ted Sarandos, Netflix's chief executive was speaking last week in Cannes. That's the sounds really exciting. <laughs> Creative Marketing Festival. Oh, <laughs> bet those guys had an absolute year. well of a time. <laughs> uh, said, we are adding an ad tier. We're not adding ads to Netflix as you know it today. We're adding an ad tier for folks who say, hey, <laughs> I want a lower price and I'll watch ads. I think that's the best way. If you're going to do it, that's the way to do it. So there was a worry that they'd add them to the current lowest tier. He said, yeah, tier exactly. He, he added... Uh, I want the product to be better than what you get on TV. Yeah. I don't know what that means. No, do I. <laughs> Sounds like marketing talk. Oh, yeah. He sounds like he's been at a marketing conference. Uh, yeah, yeah, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, a spokesman has later added that Netflix is still in the early days of deciding how to launch this lower price ad supported options and no decisions have been made. Well, I think if he said that you're doing it, you're doing it. Yeah. Mate, so. uh, yeah, cool. I mean, look, it's not necessarily for me, but I... I think, look, if, it's worth a try, if that's the difference. What have they got to lose? Yeah. If that's what you need to do to watch Stranger Things. Yeah. There's a lot of adverts in a two hour, 40 <laughs> episode of Stranger Things. That's true. But that is very true. Look, it's a good option, I think. It's better than them adding it onto their current lowest tier. Yeah. It's better than doing that. So I think so. It, it, it will get them more subscribers. It's just a fact. Some people will be up for it. Yeah. It would just be interesting to see what they do charge for it. Yeah, exactly. Because I think the lowest tier is like seven ninety nine at the minute, I think. And it'll be interesting to see what approach all of these guys are taking. Is it going to be internal ads, yeah. or are they are they shopping out? Give us some money, toothpaste company. It's got to be that, hasn't it? I, I would have thought so because it's a double money spin. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not advertising their own content, are they? People would watch that anyway. I don't know. I listen. I listen to enough podcasts oh, don't where they have an advert podcasts. for the own the podcast that you're list, already listening to. On <laughs> there's a new trend as well. Have you noticed in podcasts, especially on Acast podcasts, where they'll add a, other podcast hosts will come on to host their podcast, and then they'll do an ad. Yeah, oh, that pisses me right <laughs> off. I hit the plus thirty second button as soon as yep. that starts. It's, it's Acast. They're just they're a scourge on the industry. But we, it's, it's so if we, badly done. If we ever sign well, up for them, it? I didn't say that. <laughs> just in case. Yeah, it is. They're so badly done. Just drop it's the one where they go, oh, uh, yes. And I can't wait to carry on this conversation after uh, we just talk about. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lube it's, or whatever. It's like Peter Crouch is all, he's everywhere because somebody's making him some beer. <laughs> and it's like, well, I don't care. I don't care about your podcast. And I don't care about the advert that you've got on it. That's an interesting one, actually, because that's that. that <laughs> you do care. <laughs> no, no, just do that shit because they moved over to that because yeah. they left the they BBC, left the BBC to make more money. So from they Acast. obviously took the took the dollar took dollar the money from Acast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, this is an exciting picture I've got on my screen. Okay, next piece of news is about Heartstopper. Yes. Uh, season two uh, confirmed. It is starting filming in. September. Sweet. That's not even that long away. It's not. A pretty quick turnaround for that show. I wonder if they'll take um, Cobra Kai's early New Year slot. Because Cobra Possibly. Kai, they, they always used to come on just before New, just after New Year, didn't they? 
I wonder uh, if they'll take that. Interestingly, if you remember, Heartstopper was renewed for not one, but two more seasons. It was. So they may even be filming back to back. I think that's the best way to do it because these are teenage kids playing teenage characters. Yes. You can't wait a couple of years between each I think you've got to strike while the iron's hot. I think stick with three seasons. That's plenty. Yeah. And then you're done. And film them back to back. That's what I'd do with it, personally. Yeah, plus if you're if you're doing it back to back, you're 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 starting in September. Yeah, like you say, you can turn that around reasonably yeah. quickly. Think about it. One one at the beginning of next year, one at the end of next year, you're done with it. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I've watched it since we spoke oh, about it. Yeah. What did you think? Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was brilliant. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, really good, really, really, good, show. really good show. I mean, if I was being hypercritical, don't, <laughs> don't. It's my favourite. No, it's amazing. It is, <laughs> it is amazing. amazing. It is amazing. Not. Not all the performances are brilliant, but yeah, most okay, of that's them, fair. mostly they are. That's right. Look, so honestly, it's such an important show. Yeah, the, massively. You know, just it's massively just important. Everyone show. should go and watch it. You'll the learn cast of Heartstopper are on Celebrity Gogglebox tonight. Oh, cool. They're a new cast member. Brilliant. Excellent. If you've not watched Heartstopper, go and watch it. It's the best show on Netflix this year so far. Strange things I haven't finished yet. How. <laughs> <laughs> we've not been talking that long <laughs> how do you feel about toys love toys okay good netflix not those is ones. They're creepy as fuck yeah they are a bit creepy aren't they <laughs> yeah like broken toys one's a clown it's like a clown with a quiff it's like mark lamar in clown <laughs> form mark lamar was mark lamar in clown form <laughs> Uh, well, Netflix has revealed uh, first look images at an upcoming limited series. It is called Lost Ollie, <laughs> and it will premiere on Wednesday, August the twenty fourth. Oh, that's really soon. Twenty twenty two. Four episodes, each forty five minutes long, okay. based on a children's book, Ollie's Odyssey. Um, by uh, it says it says according to this renowned author and illustrator William Joyce. I'm not familiar with this one. No, but I've not read a lot of children's books for 30 odd years. Uh, it follows Ollie, a lost toy, trying to find his way back home and back to his best friend. Uh, Jonathan Groff voices oh, okay. Ollie. Uh, and Mary J. Blige, Tim Blake <laughs> Nelson, Jake Johnson are all in the voice cast. That's quite a cast. Uh, it comes from the creative mind of Shannon Tindall, who was behind Kubo and the Two Strings. Oh, okay. I've so, heard of that. Yeah. Oh, well, it was cool. It was creepy, but it was cool. Uh, do you want it's the nice synopsis? Pictures. Yeah, of course. Lost Ollie is an epic adventure about a lost toy who braves the many dangers of childhood as he searches the countryside to reunite with the boy who lost him. As the story of the boy who lost more than a best friend. A heartwarming tale for the child in us, remembering those special souls that we've lost but who forever change our lives. I feel like that's going to be really sad. Yeah, quite. <laughs> it sounds quite like it, doesn't it? Cool. Yeah, I'll definitely be checking that out. That's good. Awesome. Awesome. Next. The next bit of news yeah. is about a project that is coming to Netflix based on a book. The book is called The Moon Represents My Heart. Nope. Do you know what's interesting about this book? What's that? It's not even been published yet. Right, okay. <laughs> Which is pretty, pretty... I think if you're pretty happy, aren't you? If you're the author, your book's Shit. not even out. Netflix have already snapped it up. Yeah. Uh, and they've already cast Gemma does, Chan. Oh, wow. In the adaptation. How does uh, that happen? <laughs> uh, it's also... You'll like this. It's a show about time travel. I do love time travel. Uh, um... The Moon Represents My Heart is a not yet published debut novel from Thai Chinese author Pim Watajuat. <laughs> well done. Thanks. Uh, published next year in the UK. So it's not even out this year? No. Wow, if they're not careful, the TV show will come before this show. Uh, it's about a British Chinese family with the secret ability to time travel. Huh? When the parents of the family mysteriously disappear, the son and daughter have to travel through time to try and find them. Whilst coming of age as adults. Sounds interesting. It does, doesn't it? Hmm. Yeah, I'm up for that. Sounds good. Yeah, that's definitely in your uh, wheelhouse, yeah, I think. Definitely is. Excellent. The book, I mean, just the book. Book will be out and then maybe. <laughs> probably not that far behind maybe, it. Maybe they'll come out at the same time. <laughs> um, 
Who dual, knows? Dual release of the book and the show would be interesting. Next. Next is, do you like Stranger Things? Yep. Because <laughs> we've talked about it enough on this episode. We have talked about it quite a lot just lately. Uh, do you like music? Yeah. Music's pretty important in Stranger Things. Yeah, it is. The whole soundtrack's massive. <laughs> well, if you've got... Especially spo- this season. If you've got Spotify... Yeah. You can search for the Upside Down playlist. Okay. And you will have a personalised list of music. Oh. And a, what Netflix have done in partnership with Spotify... As just, let's be honest, a cool marketing idea. Yeah. Is say that the first song on your upside down playlist is the song, it's your saviour song. Oh, really? It's what would be playing if you were trying to escape Vector's castle. That is really interesting. That's a great little marketing tool. I bet loads of people have tried that. Yeah. I've tried it. Have you? Yeah. What song did you get? Uh, I got uh, Ocean Avenue by Yellow Card. Wow, that is so random. Yeah. I've known of Yellow Card for years. It's a good song. It is a good song. I'd, it's not where my brain would have first gone. No, nor mine. But there you go. That's my uh, that's my saviour song, apparently. I've got Spotify on my phone. Shall we do it live? Yeah. Now? I didn't know. I didn't know. Do I have to have so, a, I don't have to have a premium account, do I? Because I haven't. Uh, I don't think so. Look, we can what, find What do out. I search for? Upside Down. Upside Down Playlist. Yeah. Here we go. I don't, mine felt pretty on brand in terms of the... Uh, the genre of music. Foo Fighters next year. Okay. <laughs> Apparently it's going to save my life. <laughs> they are all songs that I would listen to though, to be fair. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not. Hold on. That's just on the list. I've clicked on the list now. It's a meatloaf song. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> a kiss is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> That's a tune. That's quite cool. We're in the hills on there. Yeah, you've got, uh, you've got the, uh, the usual Stranger Things suspects in there. What a great idea. Meatloaf, going to save my life yeah. from bank now. Who'd have thought it? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good gimmick. Check it out. Let us know what you, what song you got. Hit us up in the Discord or yeah. on the socials. Yeah, go and have a look and, uh, and let us know. Who's saving you from bank now? I don't fancy Meatloaf's chances of saving <laughs> my life, to be honest. <laughs> next. Uh, next, we have got, uh, I think, the final bit of news and the first bit of non-Netflix news. Okay, okay. Uh, Lee One L. Great, the great Lee Wanell. He was like behind Saw, wasn't he? He was, yeah. Uh, and recently, The Invisible Man. Yeah, which is also great. He is going to be the latest person to revive the Green Hornet. Oh, okay. Uh, he's signed a deal uh, with Universal to direct The Green Hornet and Kato. Obviously, a very uh, sort of popular radio show way Mm. way back in the 40s then uh, a tv series in the 60s with bruce lee yeah where he made his name uh, and then uh, not so successfully (laughs) a uh, movie with seth rogan i haven't seen that (laughs) no i haven't either Uh, but it's coming back cool Uh, and he's the guy who's been given that task lee one would turn his hand at anything so why not that invisible man was a real sort of Surprise Sleeper. hit, wasn't Sleeper it? Hit, yeah, it was my last no. film, last cinema trip before COVID. Was it? Mm. Ah, good fact. Thanks for me. <laughs> it's not for anybody else. So ne- that's on Netflix as well. So okay. it's kind of Netflix news. Oh, there you go. Uh, that's all the news. <laughs> good news. Well done. I'm impressed. I liked all that. That. Have you watched anything good at the top of the stream? Uh, I've watched a couple of things this week. I watched the all series, the whole series, the whole series, all of it. I've watched a whole Eight series episodes. of something this week as well. Of Snowflake Mountain on Netflix. Sweet. It's kind of by accident. I've heard of it roughly, yeah. briefly. Don't know much about it. Uh, it. Look, it's fine. It's it's a bunch of pampered, uh, spoilt youngsters yep. being forced to go and live in, well, what they think are terrible conditions, which I thought I'd quite like to go on this holiday. <laughs> uh, Is it reality it, TV then? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yes, but heavily. Yeah. Modern day reality. Yeah, yeah, heavily edited, uh, where they have to sort of camp in lovely tents, uh, cook their own food. Oh, sounds lovely. Um, look, it's fine. It's got some cool, like, clearly people go on journeys, figuratively and literally. <laughs> uh, some of the people in there are horrible. Some of them do grow oh, and nice. learn something. Uh, uh, my criticism wouldn't would be, I, I don't, they weren't exactly tasked with tough stuff. Right. Uh, you know, chop a tree down, uh, 
cook some meat, um, climb a mountain. That was like the main event. Right. It's, I, but uh, maybe some people, to some people, that stuff might be really difficult. Absolutely. But um, yeah, look, it's your typical glossy, well done Netflix. Yeah. Reality they, TV show. They know what they're doing with that when it comes yeah. to that, don't they? They, they do that thing where every one ends on a cliffhanger. It's yeah. not really a cliffhanger. And then and you accidentally started the, the next episode. episode. Yeah. It's how they pull you in. It is. It's what they do. So, yeah, that. And then I watched the first two episodes on Disney Plus of season two of Only Murders in the Building. Okay. Any good? Great show. It is a great show. I've not got to season two yet, yeah. but I will get to it next. Absolutely. Again, just an absolute treat. Picks up where it's left off? Yes. Excellent. Definitely good. did end in a cliffhanger season one. Yeah, it did, yeah. Uh, yeah. Really good. good highly times. recommend it. I will it. be checking that out as soon as I finish. I, I think it's going to drop it. weekly. Oh, is it coming? Okay. So. okay. How many? So the first two are out and then it's weekly. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay. I didn't realize that. That's even yeah. easier then. Cool. How about you? I haven't put it on this list, but I watched the whole series of Man vs. B. Oh, okay. Over yeah. last weekend, which is Rowan Atkinson's new project. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Cool. That's all it needed to be. Nobody else could have done it. I don't think. I think it's Mr. Bean. Right. It is just Mr. Bean with a few more speaking roles in it. It's just, there's nine, ten minute episodes. Yeah. This is about a man fighting a bee. <laughs> Simple as that. It's very good. Very funny. If you like Mr. Bean and the Rowan Atkinson style of humour. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, nobody else could have done it. It's exactly, it's I mean, his the, vehicle. It's the stuff he gets out of bed for once every yeah. 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> No, I really enjoyed it. I've I'm sure it'll be an immense success. No, I'm sure it will. I had a lot of fun with it. It's it's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. It's stupid. Sure. But it's fun. It's funny, isn't it? A bit okay. of fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I've also started season three of Love, Victor. Right. Not enjoying it. Oh, Got okay. To say, I'm That's not enjoying it. This has one, been one of my favorite shows over the last couple of years. Yeah. But I feel like the characters are not developing. Okay. So all there is about... The, the guy who plays Victor is great, but he's just gay. And he's got <laughs> nothing else to his personality at all. That's not a personality trait. No, and <laughs> it's starting to annoy me a little bit now. He says it pretty much in every line that he in speaks. In case you didn't realise. In case you didn't realise. And it's, yeah, it's grating on me a little bit this season. Wow. I've only done three episodes, so it might get a bit better. But all they talk about is their relationships. And if they're not talking about their relationships, they're talking about somebody else's. Okay. And it's just getting a little bit tedious this season. It's a bit like that's not real. how real people That's not live. how real people live, no. Yeah. And when you compare it to something like Heartstopper, it's it's completely different. Wow. Yeah, so I'll stick with it because I've still I've done the first two seasons. I'm not this is the final season. It's oh, okay. it's done now, so I'll stick with it and get to the end, but yeah, the first three have not not impressed me so far. Okay. Oh. And I also watched Saint Maud oh, yes. last weekend, which is on Amazon Prime, I believe. Okay. Recommendation from Ross Cook. Yeah. Again, I didn't really get it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I've been it's been on my list to watch for ages. Sure. And it didn't grab me. I'm not going to lie. It's a horror film about a nurse who goes have to, has to look after this lady who's dying of cancer. Yeah. And ghostly shit happens. It wasn't for me, I don't think. Oh, man. It was a bit too artsy-fartsy bollocks. <laughs> That's why Ross liked it. And I also watched 1408, which I've seen before. Which is a Stephen King film with John Cusack. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Which was just fun. It's just fun. I've not seen that. I think it's silly fun cinema and I've never seen it. The same. That's okay. why I watched it on Saturday. Silly fun Stephen King film. Yeah. What more could you want from it? Perfect for a Saturday night. Exactly. Pizza and a Magnum film. Awesome. Do you want to do the top 10? We've not done the top 10 for a while. And then we'll yeah, let's real do that. After that. Good idea. So this week's top 10 of films in the English language on Netflix. Are you ready? Yes, let's do it. Number 10 is It, which I think is part one has appeared on Netflix. Part two's been on there for a while, but I think part one has now yeah. appeared. Um, it doesn't say it's part one, it just says it. Um, well, if it was part two, it'd say part two. True. The first well, one's just called it, isn't it? I don't know. I don't. It seems a bit silly if it is, but maybe it is. Um, Jennifer Lopez Half Time is at number nine. Sure. This, this was her Super Bowl documentary, yeah, I think. When she had half time to the Super Bowl. That's do it's doing really well, it's doing big numbers. Um, and then another Stephen King film's at number eight. The Mist has appeared. I presume that's come on to Netflix recently. Is, is it the good one? There's been lots of versions of The Mist, haven't there? Yeah. There's a TV show, which is really good. Yeah. That is also on Netflix, I think. Okay. And the, Yeah, the film's all right. The film's decent. The, it's got one of the saddest endings of any film yes. you'll ever see. It's brutal. horrendous and brutal. Uh, number seven is Collision. Okay. Any ideas? None whatsoever. Same. <laughs> Don't even know who those people are in the uh, poster there, do you? Uh, it looks fairly generic. It does. It's one of these generic Netflix action films. It does indeed. We'll skip past it. Number six is 
Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness. Okay. That uh, looks like an animated... Indiana Jones. Indiana if, Jones if, with If he was animals. a rabbit. Yep. With a friend who looks like a tortoise. <laughs> and a uh, squunk, squunk. 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 <laughs> uh, number five is another animated film, Sing 2. Oh, Sing 2. I didn't know that was on there. I didn't know that was on there. I went in the cinema to see that and I actually quite enjoyed it. It's good. Uh, number four is Love and Gelato. Oh, lovely. Sound shit. Uh, I, I think that's... Uh, is this a whole new genre now? So we had Emily in Paris, yeah. which was Love in Paris. Yeah. And now we're going for Love in Italy. It I looks like it, doesn't well, it? That's the Colosseum behind them. It sure is. Uh, number three is Hustle. Yeah. I think the top three are pretty self-explanatory. This Great movie. Uh, number two is Spiderhead. It's an okay movie. And at number one this week is The Man from Toronto. Now, talking earlier about marketing movies, yeah, that movie is all over my yeah, it's everywhere TV. <laughs> it is everywhere. It's all over my algorithms. Yes, fifty three point eight nine million hours this week. Yeah, I'm not hearing many good things about it though. Yeah. No, I just kind of figured it as one of those you're going to hear about it. Yeah, whatever not, it is. Not really. I know a few people. I know a couple of people who've seen it who weren't that impressed with it. Yeah. To be honest. Should we do TV shows? Let's do it. TV shows in the English language. Number 10 is the aforementioned Man vs. B. Okay. That's 18.2 million hours when the episodes are only 10 minutes long. Quite impressive. <laughs> it's like the antithesis of Stranger, Stranger things. things. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it, it, it's what it basically is is a 90 minutes movie that's been chopped up. Yeah. Because the episodes follow straight on from each other. Okay. So there's, it's just been chopped up into a movie. Uh, number nine is First Kill, season one. Okay. Vampires. Vampires. That looks like your lady from Lost, I think. Don't know her name. Elizabeth Mitchell, is that her? Yeah. Well, good. Thank you. Good. Pulled that one out of the memory bank. <laughs> Did. Uh, number eight is You Don't Know Me, which apparently is really good. Um, I've not, I don't know a lot about it, but I've heard really good things about it. Okay. Uh, 21.9 million hours this week for that one. Uh, the Umber, Umberarelli Academy, <laughs> season one, is at number seven. Um, obviously, season three has just been released. It so has. the previous seasons are also charting. Stranger Things has dropped to number six this week. That is the first Stranger Things, though, I think. Oh, is it? Yeah. It is, you're right. Oh, yeah, because they're all there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Stranger in number six is Stranger Things Season 1. And uh, number five is Peaky Blinders Season 6. That's its third week of release. And the top four are Stranger Things Season 2, Stranger Things Season 3, and Stranger Things Season 4 has dropped to number two because the Umbrella Academy Season 3 has done some astronomical numbers this That's week. That's a lot. 124.5 million viewing yeah. hours. Umber Aca- Umbrella Academy is big. Yeah. And I have n- I think I watched two episodes of it and couldn't get into uh, it. Same. I, no, I just never went. It's one of those. Watched two, thought it was fine, and just for, just never went back. Yeah. I feel like maybe when it's done, I might yeah. hit it. That, that leaves Netflix's Stranger Things total currently, before these two episodes have released, at 930 million viewing hours. Wow. So to get to Squid Game, they need, need roughly 800 million viewing hours from these last two That episodes. is insane. It's not, it shows you how big strange, uh, Squid Game it is. It really puts it into perspective. It really does. They need to double, basically, yeah. with two episodes. I don't think they'll be far off, but I don't think they're going to do it. They're going to... I think it's too big a gap yeah. to bridge, Yeah, I think. I agree. I think you're right. It's definitely... It's, it's easily the number two now. So, but like you say, 1.65 billion for... Squid Game. I think it's too big, but we'll see. Stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. Nice, thank nice. you. You didn't even mean that. That is great work. <laughs> right, should we do some real talk? Let's do some real talk. <laughs> so, what was this week's real talk question, Nick? We're not ready for it again, are we? Not at all. <laughs> this week's question for real talk: What is the best film you've never seen? Hmm. Yeah, interesting one. Good question. I, thought, I thank you. I came up with it. Off the top of my head, out of nowhere, it just popped into my head like a little nugget. Okay, there you go. <laughs> do we have any responses? Uh, we Should we do the Discord for it first? First? First, do we, it. we had quite a few responses in there. Uh, Wayne said The Shining is the best film he's never seen. Yes, or correct. Blade Runner. Blade Runner came up a lot, didn't it? It did, yeah. I've never seen it either. Have you not? No. It surprised, surprised me how no. few people have seen Blade, Blade Runner. Runner. Yeah, it's surprising, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Both good answers. Yeah. They Both are. good answers. Wayne famously has never seen The Shining. 
when one of his greatest friends thinks it's the best film ever made. <laughs> uh, Sam Holland says The Godfather Part 2. Okay. Not sure if you've seen the part one and just didn't like it. or. <laughs> I think he said that later on. I think he said he got bored of The Godfather and uh, never went back. But yeah, yeah. The Godfather 2. Yeah, so, I mean, pretty much, you know, you see all these greatest movies ever lists. Mm. It's right up there. Top five, top three. Yeah. Even higher. Uh, I have seen it once. Same. Can't really remember anything about it and it didn't didn't float my boat. No. So I, I can totally understand where it's coming from. Uh, Alex in the Discord says, there's loads of classics I haven't seen, but I feel like the biggest gap is Alien. That's because a big I gap. feel like I miss a lot of cultural references having not seen it. Yeah, maybe you probably would, to be fair. I think that's a good good idea. Uh, Ross Cook is going with the Oscar-winning uh, 1998 movie, Life is Beautiful. I too have not seen that. I haven't heard seen of it. it. <laughs> it's I the don't one really where, know much about where it. Um, Roberto, it was it Roberto Benigni, he won, he won the Oscar and he ran along the back of the chairs. Oh, yeah, the... yeah. I remember that clip. I don't think I've never heard um, of the film. Though. Yeah. I, but I, then I haven't seen it. Ross had to pick an obscure one because he's seen every film ever made. <laughs> it's, it's Oscar winning. I don't think it's obscure. It's though, obscure, though, isn't it? It's not the Godfather or Blade Runner. <laughs> yeah, but this, we're talking about guys seeing all the movies. So, yeah, you know. all of the movies. Uh, I, I had a couple. That sprang to mind for me. Go on. Um, I, I think my official answer is Pan's Labyrinth. Okay. I've only seen that once, but because, it is good. Uh, and the reason I'm, I'm going with that is because I did own it <laughs> right, for okay. many, many years. Yeah. And it never even got unwrapped from the cellophane really? on DVD. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, not in some sort of protest or anything. Yeah. It just never happened. The thing is, you'd probably really like it. Yeah, I'm sure you I would. You probably would. It's one, it's one of them things, though, isn't it? It's... Yeah. You've run out of time for these films. It, it just never happened. It's a good and answer. The other one that uh, struck me was Interstellar. Because really? I see it, people seem to bang on about that all the time. Yeah. On the socials. And, it's a great film. Uh, I've, I've never seen it. I'm not the biggest fan of Nolan stuff. Yeah, I can that's sometimes true. find it a bit pretentious. And I, again, I've just, I've just never got... Oh, it's definitely pretentious. I've never got around to Interstellar. <laughs> it's, it's all right. It's a good uh, film. Uh, it's, it's never really appealed to me. Uh, Samuel Holland then came okay. out with another one. I'm just going to mention this because it's a really good answer, okay. uh, which is E.T. Wow. Uh, I've only seen the first 10 minutes because my sister was terrified. So we turned it off and I've never gone back to it. Go back to it. <laughs> one of the greatest films. E.T.'s great. Yeah. I've, I've probably I've seen that loads. Yeah, when I was same. a kid, we used to go to my grandma's on a Sunday afternoon and it was the only videotape she owned. Sure. So we used to just watch E.T. all the time. <laughs> used to watch it. I've watched E.T. a lot of times. I've got a couple on the Twitters and the Instagrams. Go for it. Um, there's a guy called Matt Davis Blogs. That's his Twitter name. He's going to piss you off. Because <laughs> he has put, um, I have never seen Clueless, American Psycho, The Fifth Elephant, Fifth Elephant, <laughs> or The Big Lebowski. Oh, okay. So, yeah, big news. Fine. Yeah, well, wanted... they're, they're all good. I'm yeah, sure. they are all good. I've never seen Clueless out of them. Have you not? Nope. Um, Paul Rudd when he was old. Yeah, <laughs> Paul Rudd's never old. No, it still isn't old now. That's the joke. <laughs> uh, Chris from the Time Splitters podcast, good friend of the show. Yeah, he has never seen any of the Godfather films. Oh, okay. which is big because that guy watches a lot film. of films. He knows films well. Um, and we had one on the Instagrams from my brother responded to us with the Green Mile. Oh, okay, which surprises me a lot as well because yeah. it's a great film. It's long. It is long, which has left me to headline this segment again now, and I don't like it. Um, I racked my brains on this one. There's a lot of films I haven't seen. Sure. Um, I think the one that's going to shock people the most, and will definitely shock Harrison from the Grief Burrito podcast, will be pissed off with this. I've never seen 2001 A Space Odyssey. Okay. And I feel like that, that I should. <laughs> <laughs> I see, it's a big one. You know, it's, it's a... You know, culturally and also for its its point in history and and technologically, what it did with, yeah. with the facts is it's it's a big one. Mm. Uh, I again, I've seen it once. The Shining's one of my favorite films. Yeah, and I've not seen that, so I'm going to make it my mission this year to watch that at some point. Okay, I've also never seen Schindler's List. Oh, really? I feel okay. like that should be one well, of those things. It's not an easy watch. No, <laughs> which is why I've never done it. <laughs> I did go through the IMDb top. 250 films sure and there was two in the top 10 that i hadn't seen but i can't remember what they were okay one was the good the bad and the ugly yeah and then there was another one so yeah good answers everybody this week it's surprising yeah. the gaps in people's film knowledge isn't it but it just happens isn't it and that's why i yeah. think why it was such an interesting question because there's just you you just go i've just never got to that yeah. and there's no 
I'm not, you know, intentionally avoiding it necessarily. No, it's, it's just, just not happening. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's interesting to see what some of those are. <laughs> Absolutely is. So if you want to get involved in that, check out, keep your eyes on our socials. We do a different Real Talk question every week. Uh, they go out usually on a Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest. Yeah. And yeah, Discord, Twitter, Instagram. We're all over it. Yeah. Reddit sometimes if I remember and exactly. don't get banned from wherever I'm putting them. <laughs> So that's always good. And I think we're done. I think that's Talk it. Talk briefly about the film that we're going to talk about on Thursday. Yeah, come back here on Thursday to this very feed because we're talking about a British horror movie <laughs> called Pentagram. We are indeed. It's going to be a really interesting episode. It is. Uh, there's loads to talk about. Yeah. This, I think, for my money, not for their money, is one of the lowest budget films we've yeah. done on this show yeah we say that quite often but this is that this, this, this is, is down, there, with, down there yeah in there's four people in one room yeah there's, there's the whole film set in one room with four people in it yeah i mean look we've been in this sort of situation before with this kind of movie and we've usually had a pretty good fun, fun yeah, time it could on go the, either uh, way episode. This one. it really could go either way okay. i still don't know what you're going to have thought of it so okay I'm, I'm excited for that but uh interesting yeah so yeah come back and talk to and Come back to this very feed on Thursday and we'll talk to you about Pentagram. Yeah, I'm excited. Me too. Shall we get out of here and go and record it? Let's do it. Cool. See you later. Cheers. Bye.